All right, welcome back to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call powered by Fan Sportsbook, FanDuel Sportsbook. So give us a call, 412 575 26 Zero, zero. We have a couple lines open right now, but we're going to continue this conversation uh, with either Ben Roethlisberger or I'm going to talk about the Pens and what they do right now. Who do you trade then? Um, if you try to get a top six forward, you're going to have to give up someone. I know we talked about Anthony Duclair might be a good guy that, to try to go out yeah. and get on an Ottawa team that probably is looking to unload for something in the future. Yeah, I, I don't know if he would be the guy they'd want to unload right now. Well, I think playing, so. you're right, yeah. I think guys uh, like Tyler Toffoli, and uh, Chris Kreider are names that are being thrown around. Some are talking about Brandon Saad coming back, but he's injured right now, too, for Chicago. I think Kreider makes the most sense. I believe a $4.6 million cap hit. Um, I think he's about 11 or 12 goals right now for the Rangers. Has good speed and size. Uh, that's somebody that I think could play with either Malkin or Crosby, potentially. So uh, that name makes sense. I think Toffoli's ma name makes sense. A couple other guys have been thrown around. J.G. Pajot, he seems to come up every time the Penguins have a trade need, re need for one reason or another. And, yeah, the Saad thing would be great with the local tie and all that, but um, I don't think they want to bring in another injured guy yeah. for – I mean, you have a right first-round draft pick you could play with out yeah, there. Yeah, you know, they, they have tried to get away from that because for so many years they just dealt away first-round picks like they were candy, and they were in a win-now window. Well, that window's getting shorter and yeah. shorter. So, and I know they want to rebuild and win now at the same time. That's tough to do. We talked about the goalie situation. Yeah. I know you're reticent to trade Matt Murray. Well, I mean, you're reticent yeah. to trade either. So, but what would you do between I, the two goaltenders? Look, Jari's playing great, and we talked about this. If you if he's playing this way at the trade deadline, I think about trading Murray. I really do. If you can get a lot for him, uh, you do it. You just go but with say, Jari. Say to me what you said in the newsroom upstairs. You said that you don't think the Penguins could win the Stanley Cup with Casey to Smith as their number two goaltender. I did say that. Yes. That doesn't change regardless yes. of which number one you. You're trade. right. It doesn't. You know what else doesn't happen? They don't make the playoffs unless they get somebody to fill in for Jake Gensel, potentially. I agree with you. Like, that really could happen. If they don't fill the void of Gensel, they might not make the postseason, and they don't get out of the first round without Gensel. Well, think. before we get to the calls, the, the point I'm trying to you, – you brought it up, but the point I want to make is, yeah, their window is shrinking. They got two, three, four years with Sidney Crosby and Malkin and all these guys together. So maybe mortgage a future. Maybe make these trades. Maybe make a gamble because uh, I – think you're in win now mode and yeah. then rebuild in a couple let me years. tell you this matt murray is potentially pricing himself out of being the number one goalie here based on what some people are saying he wants in his contract i would want it too i mean he has two stanley cups and okay basilevsky got give what 10 million a year they I don't mean, want to I, give it to him and they got yeah. another guy that they think is pretty good so you trade him and you so, get what you can't well, back that's for what him. i'm saying they, yeah. he might be not only putting himself in a position where they're trying to groom the other guy for more long-term things and jari they might be doing this to the tune of potentially trading him, too, as a result. Now, that's a guy who could bring back a haul. I think so, too. Yeah, especially to a team like Ottawa, who could use a goalie of the future. Or San Jose. Or San Jose. And Ottawa has both those guys that we're talking about. Um, Duclair and Pajot, right? So, yeah, I mean... The other, the, the other thing that comes into play with Kreider, too, you have to keep in mind, you're doing something in division. So, you know, do you trade Matt Murray in division to get Chris yeah. Kreider for a year? Not for, not you know, for one year. No. Whatever's left in his contract. Do the Rangers want to trade Kreider within division to the Penguins? All right, Kirk Harmer, what's up, buddy? Hi, guys. Hey, hey. first I want to wish you uh, both and all of your viewers a very happy and safe New Year. You too. Uh, thank you. Um, after the fourth and last game of the preseason, I called in and talked to Bob and Gene and predicted that the Steelers, at best, would probably field a 9-7 and seven record. That's if none of the players suffered injuries. Because only, Bill, Bob, only Ben had the ability to, to spread the ball around. Uh, you can't lose a number one receiver, number one running back, and expect to field a winning team. That's not possible. Uh, with the advent of Ben going down, well, I called in a few weeks later and predicted a 6-10 and 10 record. They ended up 8-8 eight and eight only because of Minka Fitzpatrick. He single-handedly won. No, the game. it's not just Minka Fitzpatrick. The, the T.J. Watt kid's pretty good, in case you didn't yeah. notice. And Bud Dupree's pretty good, and Cam Hayward's pretty good. The whole defense is But good. I think Don't. that they worked off each other. I mean, T.J. and Bud are better because of Minka Fitzpatrick well, sure they and vice are. versa. But like, to, to, say um, that, to say that a free safety cost, uh, gave them three wins by himself is a little grandiose. I, I'm not going to agree with him. Uh, but I'm going to th say that trade might have helped them get two or three wins. Sure. Not him. 
but that trade. No, I mean, yeah. I'll, I'll give you that, but to say it single-handedly is diminishing no. the assets of what the other defensive players. Once the defense single-handedly got them there, I agree with that. And but, it, you know, I, I'm a little confused about what his point was insofar as if he's trying to make the suggestion that you got to back off the coaches for criticism, like we were talking about maybe making some coaching changes. You want to back off of that because of what happened with all the injuries. Yeah, sure. But don't say that you can't field a winning team with all the injuries because they should have. They were 8-8. Eight and eight. That's a 500 team. Yeah. And they should have won one of those last three games to at least get to 9-7. and seven. So you could have. Yeah, they, they could have easily beat the Bills. They should have beaten the Jets. Um, and you're playing the, the you're playing the, the backups. Baltimore backups, and I don't want to say that 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 they kind of melted in that game, but if you watched it, I was at the game, and when they showed that score, 21 to seven, you could kind of sense that the players looked up and saw it, that they knew that their well, season was Well, I also saw over. the score being 0-0 at the start of the game in Houston and Tennessee, and I saw the Baltimore Ravens run the ball down their throats. Yeah, all running plays too. All right, let's go out to Brad and Saxon. What's up, Brad? Hey, yeah, uh, I was just wondering, do you think the price might be right? Do you think the Steelers would ever do it? How about Andy Dalton maybe as a backup of uh, Cincinnati lets him go? I think he'd be too much, Tim. I mean, if you're going to look at this team, it's you, you got to ride with Ben. You're not going to overpay for a backup, at least in my mind. You go with Mason Rudolph, you use that money somewhere else. If you're going to have Mason Rudolph be the third quarterback, there's no reason to keep Mason Rudolph. Uh, that, that's another good because, point. Because, like, you know, let's go back to the week that led into the most recent game against the Ravens where you heard Mike Tomlin say repeatedly, we're not comfortable with where we have Paxton Lynch. And that might be more about Lynch himself. But all you heard all week long from me that's cut of the team is it's really hard to just throw the third-string quarterback in, whether it's in-game or whether it was within one week of yeah. potentially having to play because they get so few reps. All you're going to do is retard the progress of Mason Rudolph, pure and simple, like to the point that it's actually going to be like he's duck. And what do you know then about that guy when he comes up for the last year of his contract? If you're going to go out and get a guy like Andy Dalton, okay, then there's no reason to keep Mason Rudolph. You might as well trade him and keep Duck as the third or Paxton Lynch as the third. Dalton's going to get a lot of money somewhere. I mean, he's still looking for a starting job. Probably same with Case Keenum. Guys like that are going to command a lot of money. I'm fine with going in with the quarterbacks that they have this year, next year. If Ben gets hurt, another season any injury, then you know you're in this situation again. But I think I was okay with Mason Rudolph there. I think if Mason would have continued to play that Jets game, that they might have won that game. Uh, then they would have been 9-7, and seven, and who knows what they would have done in that Baltimore game. Um, but I, I go with what they have. Paxton Lynch and Duck can battle for that third spot. Um, and I, I wouldn't invest five, six million dollars into a backup is what I'm trying to say. Uh, with all the other needs that they have and with only one pick within the first 95, uh, yeah. I wouldn't either. Not that much. All right, let's go out to, we're going to take a break before we go out. we got Howard on the line. We're going to get to you in a second, but first we've got to take a break. Back right after these messages. Portions of this program sponsored by FanDuel Sportsbook, 